Uh, hi, so I just want to make a quick screencast for the benefit of those that might not already uh, know how to do this. And the idea behind this screencast is just to showcase um, a technique that you could take advantage of to ensure that as you, are, as you begin to consume these offline recorded video screencasts, you, you use as less bundles or data bundles as you could possibly use without compromising the quality of the screencast. And, and also, I just wanted to mention that this only applies to um, those of you that are going to be using smartphones when downloading these offline screencasts. Um, if you happen to be using a laptop, a desktop, uh, whilst doing this, all you have to do is uh, use a tool like YouTube uh, DL. Uh, uh, that's YouTube hyphen DL, one word. Just Google that up and then you'll be able to find a whole bunch of tutorials on how to do this. Okay. So for, for starters, we know that, uh, I guess we know by now where exactly to go when we want to access the uh, respective screencasts associated with the, uh, with the course you might be enrolled into. Um, so that would be either uh, 1110 or 3020. Um, the URLs to the YouTube playlist are available in the respective course syllabuses. Um, but if you don't have access to the course syllabus, you could just go to YouTube and just uh, search for Lighton. Um, and then just click on Lighton's uh, YouTube channel. Once you get there, what you want to do is to, sorry about that, once you get there, what you want to do is to uh, scroll down to uh, a section of Lighton's channel that says Teaching in West of Zambia, Computer Systems and Architecture, and I apologize for that uh, name, it's a wrong name, because there are playlists for the different courses that Lighton teaches. So uh, from here, you can just navigate to um, respective course. So if you're enrolled into 1110, you go into the playlist for 1110, which has four videos. If you're enrolled into um, 3020, you go to the 3020 playlist, which is down here. And we use 3020 as an example here. Um, so you notice 3020 has, uh, uh, well, about four videos here, which is good. Um, right. So. Ideally, when you're consuming these videos via YouTube, what you do is you watch it directly, right? But you want to avoid that. Why? Because you, if this thing is going to go on for a relatively long period of time, what you want to do is to make sure that you have an offline copy of the video. So ideally, you just use YouTube to download the video once and then you consume it on your device offline, as opposed to going to YouTube every time you want to consume it. That way you get to save data bundles. Okay, so from the... Um, the video itself within YouTube, to the, on, on your top right corner is that menu item, those three vertical dots, if you can see that. When you click on them and you get to quality there, you notice that you have access to the different um, resolutions associated to this video, right? The, uh, while you, you could um, use experience, I guess, to, to set off for maybe 240p, 360p, or maybe 1080p if you want, um, the, the question to ask is how do you know the file size or the data associated with the different resolutions, right? And so that's, that's the whole point of this screencast here, right? Um, whilst there could be a whole ton of ways of you determining this, um, a way that I have found quite effective is to use um, an application called YouTube Downloader, right? So what you want to do is uh, go to Google and then just search for Dentex um, Dentex YouTube download. Um, so on, 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 on the Google search result page, SRP, just go for the search result that corresponds to this URL, dentex.github.io, right, which is the first result in my case. So just go there. And then on the, on the software page itself, you want to scroll down to um, the section of the page that has the button download latest build so click on that button and what that will do is it will enable you to download the apk file right um, and the idea behind doing this as opposed to going through the play store is that uh, for some reason not quite sure why we should look this up um, last time i checked this particular application was not available in the playlist which is why you have to go through um, this method of installing the software so Download is done, um, and then you open up the, the downloaded file, right? And then a, a pop-up will probably come up, no, pro, 
it will come up prompting you to specify which application you want to use to install to install the downloaded APK file. Um, so you come here. here. It might just be the case that your phone is not configured by default or currently to enable you to install APK files directly, right? It's, it's a security mechanism within Android. Um, and so what you'd, you'd have to do in that case is you would, uh, you'd, you'd want to make sure that you, you, um, you, you probably configure it so that it enables you to install, uh, download, uh, install applications from external sources, as they say. If you happen to run into uh, problems doing that, just send mail to the mailing list and then your colleagues or myself will chime in to help you um, figure that out. Okay, so say install and then you present it with this window, just say install. Um, the installation shouldn't take that long, ideally it shouldn't. Um, and then once done, you'll notice that uh, if I go to the home screen of my device, I have access to the installed application, which is right here. I open it up and then it will allow it, it will ask me or prompt me to grant it access to um, certain uh, certain files, media media and files on, on my device. I just say allow here. Um, and then I'll accept this uh, license agreement here. All right, so the interface is pretty basic. I mean you, you can poke around it to try and uh, read up the tutorial um, um, the, the tutorials for this. If, if you want to understand the different features of this, this, this application. But the, the key thing to note here is that it, it provides you with an interface that allows you to search for content on YouTube, right? So if we wanted to access uh, content associated with screencasts that light on, um, I guess I can just say, that light on produces, or search for a third year course that I'm teaching, which is ICT 30, uh, 3020, sorry about that, 3020, and then once I search, um, there's going to be a whole bunch of results associated with uh, 3020, right? And if you remember the video we we're looking at um, using the YouTube interface was uh, the first lecture, first 30 year lecture, which is this one here, right? Um, and again, you notice that the quality of the resolutions associated with this file um, are those five resolutions there, 144p all the way up to 1080p. You want to avoid the 1080p to eat up a lot of your bundles and I'll show you just now what I mean. Okay, so back to the YouTube download application, we want to uh, essentially download this file. So I'll tap onto it and then there'll be a contextual uh, menu that will prompt me to, to specify whether or not I want to access that particular file and just say okay. And then it'll take me to the formats tab. So from within the formats tab, you notice that um, the application is, is scanning through all the different file formats. They're providing you with the corresponding file sizes. So the 1080p file has a total size of 117.6 megabytes. The 720p file has a total size of uh, 115 megabytes, all the way up to, I guess, this uh, 480p file, which has a total size of 45.6 megabytes. Uh, a few things that you probably want to take note of is that there are certain file formats that will be tagged with a prefix of VO or AO. VO simply means it's video only, right? So what you'd be doing if you go for a video only file format is you'd just be downloading the video associated with that YouTube, um, YouTube video, right? Without the sound. Um, files tagged with a prefix of AO would mean you'd be downloading sound only, right? Um, I'll just stick to the first couple of file formats if I were you. Like I said, from experience, 480 and 360 is pretty fine. It should be decent. It's a decent size. So in this case, we will use this 270 360p file format, which is 50.1 megabytes. So just tap on it once, and then a pop-up window will come up, which uh, has a couple of options. You can cancel, you can send the file via SSH if you want to do that, or you can download the file onto your device by clicking the download here button. Um, so once that happens, boom, this is what happens. You download the file, right? Um, so it's not that hard. I guess the key thing to note here is that you want to use the format tab to be able to pick um, a file that corresponds to uh, a size that is within how much data you want to spend on a particular recorded screencast. All right, cheers and uh, 
um, an email will be sent out with regards to when the next batch of offline recorded screencasts are going to be made available. Uh, cheers and please stay safe.